Hey folks, welcome back to our Dice Tower Preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at Winter Queen. Winter Queen is brought to you by Crowd Games. It's for two to four players, ages 10 and up, and games range anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes. In a faraway land, it's always winter. Once a year, the Winter Queen announces a special competition for her court of sorcerers. Using enchanted crystals, they create magical ornaments, and the Queen pays for them with golden coins. The sorcerer to collect the most coins at the end of the competition will become the queen's next advisor. So you will take on the role of one of these sorcerers, trying to win the queen's favor and creating magical ornaments out of enchanted crystals. Each turn, you will either place a new crystal onto the board or use already placed crystals to score victory points, depending on the spell books you and your fellow sorcerers possess. Will you be able to gain the queen's favor and be her next advisor? Let's find out. So the main board has two sides and it really doesn't matter which side you play on. It's really a personal preference thing. You're gonna take the queen domain tiles and you're going to shuffle them up and place them on the corresponding spots on the board. And it is a random placement so it will change out every game. Now, based on the player count in the game, we'll determine how many crystals are you gonna be putting in the bag. And for a three player game like we're set up here, you'll be removing one of each color type. And then you'll place the crystal holder tiles around the main board. And on each of those tiles, you will randomly draw crystals from the bag. And again, in a three player game, you're going to be placing four crystals on each of these holders. In this frozen world, you'll see that there are queendom counties. Each are divided up into different colors. And you're gonna take the spell books, you'll shuffle those up and equally distribute them to each side of the individual counties. And finally, each player will receive a handy reference card. This card is going to outline all the different things the spell books can do for you to gain points or gold coins. Speaking of gold coins, we place the gold coins next to the board as well for easy access, and then you're ready to begin. So in your turn, you can perform one of three actions. The first one we're gonna look at is placing a crystal on the map. So based on where you're sitting at the table, you can pull crystals from the crystal holders that are on the right or left of you. Your chosen crystal can then be placed on any spot on the map. Now, when you do that, you have to be mindful because you're placing crystals in such a way that it will gain you points based on spell books that you have or spell books that you're trying to achieve. And for the different counties that you place a crystal in, you'll take the topmost corresponding spell book and add it to your inventory for use later. Now, you can ever only have three spell books at any one time. And if you happen to pull the last crystal from one of these crystal holders around the edge of the board, well, then you're going to gain a gold coin. And then you'll replace that with randomly drawn crystals from the bag, putting four more back onto that spot. Now, if the bag is empty, that's the game in trigger. Or you can simply place a crystal on your spell book. Now, these spell books have two pages. And so before you score them, you might want to fill up both pages with crystals. You don't have to. But the thing here is that each page is a different type of spell. And you can place any colored crystal there you so choose, but it is going to dictate how you perform the spell based on that colored crystal. And you'll look at the configurations that you have out in play. We're gonna help you determine which type of page in your book that you might want to invoke. Which brings us to the next possible action, which is scoring or activating your spell books. So the handy reference card will help and guide you through the process of activating these spell books. Now, the nice thing here is that this reference card really does help until you get more familiar with how those things work. But we'll take a look at a couple of examples here. Now remember, again, if you are able to fill both your pages, then you get to score both of those spells. But we're only look at take a look at a couple different ones here. First, we have the Border Keeper. I placed a yellow crystal on my spell book in a previous turn. So this turn, I'm going to actually score it. Now, because we have a yellow Queen's Domain tile, that gives us an extra point. So a total of three points for the yellow crystals. Now, let's take a look at the Bright Way. Now, all these spells, I should say, are very straightforward, especially once you get a handle on them. 
But here, whatever colored crystal you've placed on your spell book, in this case, we have a purple one, we're going to score every crystal in a line that is a different color. So going over to the board, we have three, giving us a purple, blue, and a yellow. That's three points or three gold coins. Now, it's important to note that once you score one of your spell books, then it's discarded along with the crystals out of the game, which is why you try to get both pages filled with crystals so you can use the maximum amount of points possible from the spell book. And once the last crystal is pulled from the bag, that will signal the game end. You basically are gonna finish out that round to get one more round. Now, you won't be able to do any more scoring of cards, but you can still acquire the different spell books and you'll want to place crystals on your spell books for in-game scoring. And of course, whoever has the most coins at the end of the game is going to be the next advisor to the queen. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview and everything you've seen here has been in prototype form. So keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. Now, with that said, you know, this is a abstract game and I love abstracts, really enjoy it. And the thing here is that it's a really well done family weight game and it works really well with four players. I was really impressed. And the back and forth and the different ways that you use the spells, I really like the spell list and just the names of those as well. And the crystals are really well done, really giving you that tactile feel. But ultimately, folks, if this looks like something that'd be of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me. And until next time, we'll see you at the table.